I had some ups and downs in businesses and everything had kind of collapsed for me. I was like, let's stop teaching how to make money. Let's get back into actually doing the business. So I want to talk about how I got excited about physical products first. Uh, the first year, 2CCX, maybe the second year, we sent a copy of The 12 Month Millionaire to everybody. Anyway, it's like one of my favorite books of all time. It's this fat book, and it's interesting. The guy who wrote it, his name is Vince James, and he made $100 million in 23 months selling supplements through direct mail, pre-internet. And his book is like the, the guide to how he did it. So 16 years ago, I got this book, and I remember reading it, and I was just blown away. I was like, how is this even possible? Like I was freaking out, reading this whole book. And I had a chance um, afterwards to actually, um, I emailed the author. I was like, dude, this is insane. Can I interview you about how you did this? And it was really cool. He actually let me interview him. He's like, write up all your questions. We'll jump on a call and you can record it. So I recorded it and we spent a whole Saturday, spent three hours recording it. And in the three hours, I had answered half my questions. And he's like, hey, come back next Saturday. We'll do this again. I'm like, are you serious? So a week later, I did the next three hours. So we had a six hour call with him where I had to ask him all my questions about how he did this. And it was crazy because he told a story about how he found the product, how he discovered it, and how he like got his own label done and got it created, and then how he wrote the sales letter, and the, and the first one didn't work, and the second one didn't work, and then the one that hit, and how it blew up, and how he took it to magazines. And I remember just in my head like hearing him uh, tell these stories about the supplement he had built up, and I, I wanted to supplement so bad. Like That's all I could think about. Like, I want to supplement someday. And so in my head, I knew someday I was going to do a supplement company, but I didn't know when. Funny side story is two years after the interview was done, I was selling information products at the time and I was like trying to figure out like, what should my next offer be? And I was like, oh, remember I interviewed Vince James? Like, I wonder if I could sell that. So I messaged him, I was like, can I sell our interview? He's like, yeah, like if you make money with it, go for it, man. So I took the interview and we uh, put it together as an offer. We launched it. It was the very first product, every first offer I ever did that did a million dollars. It was my first like two comma club thing. In fact, when we created the two comma club award, the very first two comma club award that was printed was for an, a, for this funnel. I was like, my first funnel was this. We printed one. It said 12th Millionaire Russell Brunson 1998 or whatever it was. And that was the very first one um, I ever got was for this product. And it was cool because it also happened to be the very first product we ever had an upsell with. Um, and back in the day, it was different. It wasn't like nowadays where you just have one-click upsells. So someone would buy the interview and then I had uh, licensed the book from Vince James. So someone would buy the interview for like, I think, 37 bucks and then the upsell there's a video of me it was a youtube video i had the book and i was like hey you just got the thing do you want the book as well and um it was crazy though like 30 percent of people bought the the book and it blew up and hit two comma club and it was the best offer i had ever done to that point so then fast forward um after I had some ups and downs in businesses, and um, some of you guys have heard this story, like everything had kind of collapsed for me. I was like, well, let's stop teaching how to make money. Like I'd done the Vince James interview about a bunch of other products like that. I'm like, let's just stop and let's get back into actually doing the business. And you can ask, Brent was there for these days. Um, I was like, hey, we should launch whatever. So we started launching a company. We launched one company, got up to the point where it was doing like two or three million dollars a year. Like, well, if I have one business doing two or three million dollars a year, what if I launch 10? And they used to do two or three million dollars a year, then I'd be at 20 or 30 million dollars a year. And so what happened, we launched the first one, got the, you know, got it making money. And we launched the second one and then the third one, the fourth one. And we launched, I think, 12 companies one year. And then we had these all going. What happened is that the one that was making two, three million dollars a year, the revenue dropped. And then one of them grew. And then the end of the calendar year, we'd made two or three million dollars. And like nothing had shifted other than like a whole bunch more work. And um, we kept going back and forth. But in that interim of those things happening, and we're trying to come up like, what should we create a business about? Like, what'd be fun? I was like, I want to do a supplement. And so that was the first thing. Like, we had to do a supplement. So this business was um, out of spite, I guess is the best way to say it. I didn't know what I wanted to build a supplement company around, but I had these guys who hired me as a client. This is when I was doing client work. And if you guys ever had a client where you did a whole bunch of work for, you made a bunch of money and then they don't pay you. We launched this business for them. It was doing super successful. I wrote the scripts. I wrote the copy. I trained the salespeople. We did everything. Like, I just killed myself in exchange for equity in the company. It was awesome. We get it done. We get launched. We get live. We took the first, first location they'd done it for it took them two years to fill. We did the next one, we filled it in three months. And it was amazing. I'm like, hey, this is awesome. I'm like, hey, so when do I, like, how do I get paid? And the guy's like, well, the thing is like, it was like, you didn't really, it wasn't you that did it. It was our sales guys that did it. And so like, we don't feel comfortable giving you what we promised you because like the sales guys did it and you didn't. And I was like, the sales guys I hired that I trained that I wrote the scripts for, like those, those sales guys, like, yeah, but they did it. You didn't do it. Literally, like, I didn't get a penny off of all the effort. I was super mad, but I was like, whatever, move on in my life. And then a couple years later, that company went up and went bankrupt. And then I was, in a, I was at a Dan Kennedy event. I was speaking on stage. I'm speaking, and I look out in the audience, and I see the guy and his son out in the audience. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. I was like so annoyed. And I do my presentation, I get done. And afterwards, like, I, you know, I did the sales, closed the sales in the back of the room, and they're kind of lingering. And then it gets done, and everyone leaves, and they're there, and they're like, hey, can we talk to you for a minute? They pulled me aside and literally took me to dinner that night, and they told me about this new business, this new supplement company they're launching. They want me to be partnering in it. And literally the guy said, man, Russell, if we would have realized how successful you're going to become, we wouldn't have screwed you over like that. And I was like, I always thought that you thought that, but you just said that out loud out of your mouth. Like you literally, I was like, I can't believe, I was just like, 
I was just, I was so perplexed. I was like, I don't even know what to do with myself right now. And they'd just been pitching me on the supplement company they were creating to sell a supplement helping people with diabetic neuropathy. And I was like, no. I was like, are you kidding me? Like you, and I was so mad and they went off. And for them, luckily for them, they had success with this company. It blew up. They live here locally. So some of you guys may even know them. Um, they had success with it. And uh, so when I came back, like, we should launch a supplement company. Like, what should we do a supplement on? I was like, we should compete with those guys because they're horrible humans and we should totally compete with them. And then I think Brent was like, well, what's diabetic neuropathy? I'm like, I don't know. I don't even care. We're going to compete with them and we're going to win. And so that's kind of, this company was completely built out of spite. So now it's on camera. <laughs> so that's... That's the backstory. So we create the supplement, we get it done, we get it out there, we launch a website because that's what you do and like nothing happened, no money came from it, right? I'm like, dang it. So then I met Ed O'Keefe and I knew he had a supplement that was doing well. So I messaged him, I was like, hey, how's this whole thing work? And uh, he showed me his funnel. And I think at the time they were doing like $3 million a month in this funnel. And I remember going through it and it was different than what I'd seen my friends who had stolen from me were doing. And so I wanted to go through the process and this was their process. He had a VSL, it was really good, add the cart and then the order form had the option people could buy one, three or four bottles. And after you bought, then the next step sell was six more bottles of the same thing. I remember it, uh, talking to Ed, I was like, dude, that's stupid. I was like, they just bought four bottles. They don't need six more. And I remember fighting him with this. He's like, no, dude, like, I test this. It works. I promise. And I'm like, dude, I was like, I have other offers. I'll plug in that spot. He's like, trust me, do not plug in other offers in that spot. He's like, best case scenario, offer number two is going to convert like 20, 30%. He's like, this one will convert like 50. He's like, people want more of the same thing they just bought at a discount. He's like, you have to understand the psychology. We've tested this. And so we went through and they showed me next, the rest of the funnel. And at the time, this is what the funnel actually looked like. So this became for me the new control. I was like, okay, hey, this is the control. This is what we have to model to be successful, right? So for me, my control becomes a doodle. This was the doodle. I'm like, okay, hey, this is our supplement business. This is the control. This is what works currently. Uh, he's killing it. I saw other people afterwards who had been modeling him. There's a whole bunch of people who are doing supplements and all of them kind of model the same. This process was very, very similar, right? So this became our control. When you get an offer that works, you can blow these things up. That's what's... The key one I understand is like there are ways to blow these things up when they work, but the key is like this. And so if you look at like the e-commerce funnel game in my world, this is kind of how it works, right? On the back end, we have some kind of store. And a lot of days you Shopify, in the near future, you'll be using a new tool I can't talk to you about, but after funnel, I can have you a little more about it. But there's a store, right? That has your e-commerce, your physical products in there. Driving traffic to an e-commerce store, you guys know, is not productive. Um, it doesn't, like the conversions are low, there's no upsells, no down, like it's just, it's, it's hard to make the, the metrics numbers work. So what you do is you take that, you pull out and you build a supplement funnel that's, that's goal is to get customers in, right? And so for here, for example, here's our nerve cell funnel. We had our smart nerve health store that had all the products and the things, reorders went here, other things went here where people can go and buy products, stuff like that. The email sequence is pushed to the store afterwards, but all of our paid media went to this front end funnel, right? So traffic control went there, traffic control, everything went to this funnel and we focused on optimization of the average cart value to the point we got it from, again, $120, $150 to $180 and then lowering your CPA, which is on the ad side. And as soon as you get that spread, then it's like you scale like crazy. And even if we were spending $180 to make $180, it was okay because we're profitable or we break even here and all the money comes through pushing people through the follow funnels. I can show you guys tons of case studies of people inside of click funnels who sell supplements or physical products where their front end funnels is how they break even, how they get customers in and then they push people through email to their store and that's where their profit comes from. And so that's kind of the model for a lot of these things. Figuring out one good funnel that brings customers in and then from there on the back and pushing them into your stores and things like that.